we can see the pine flycatcher will be worth it. Well, it's worth it with everything already, but that'd be a little cherry on top. In the world of birding, the most sought after species are those that are found outside of their normal range. Sometimes these birds show up in counties or even states away from where they are expected. But then there are those that show up so far removed from their normal range that they actually end up in entire countries away. In the United States, many of these species come from the bordering countries of Canada and Mexico. This was the case when a pine flycatcher was reported in Arizona. As luck would have it, we happened to be in Arizona at the exact right time to try and find this extremely rare bird. With an interesting story that we'll get to later surrounding the discovery of this pine flycatcher, along with the sheer rarity of the species in the country, we arrived eager to start searching. We're now at our first stop on Mount Lemon. I think it's over 7,000 feet of elevation where we're at now. I already saw a couple things on the way in and got some intel about the pine flycatcher, so we're going to try to go find that and then see what else we can find on the way. Yeah, but it's gorgeous up here and there's calls I don't know coming from different places, so we'll see uh, what we can pull out as lifers. Also, there's no reception, so if we need extra intel, we're kind of screwed. But thankfully, we got what sounded like good directions for the pine. Having a rough idea of where to look based on previous eBird reports, and having run into a few birders that had found the pine flycatcher earlier in the day, we felt optimistic. However, upon seeing the size of the area the bird was in, and having little knowledge about the species we were looking for, the task of finding it seemed a bit more daunting. We headed toward the steep incline leading to the coordinates we were given by other birders. The habitat was unlike anything we had encountered, and many of the birds were new for us. Continuing up the slope, we encountered a pine flycatcher lookalike the Cordilleran flycatcher. The Cordilleran flycatcher looks almost identical to both the Pacific Slope flycatcher and the Pine flycatcher. So much so, in fact, that they can only be reliably identified by a call. With each of these flycatchers we saw that didn't make a sound, we wondered if it could have potentially been the Pine flycatcher. If it was, we wouldn't have had any way of knowing. How you doing? Uh, the elevation is a little rough. Can definitely feel I'm breathing a little heavier than normal. But if we can see the pine flycatcher, it'll be worth it. Well, it's worth it with everything already, but that'd be a little cherry on top. After a hike up the bluff and seeing numerous species along the way, we arrived at the area where the pine flycatcher seemed to be sticking close to. We made it to the top. Ryan's looking at... Life or acorn woodpecker? Yeah, he's, we've seen it earlier, but this is, uh, this is a nice one perched up, so he's getting a good look at it. Just reached the top, so now we're going to take the trail this way, see if we can hear that pine flycatcher calling. While the ridge was absolutely beautiful and had a lot of birds to keep us entertained, we couldn't hear the pine flycatcher. Even if it was around, without the ability to hear it, it would be almost impossible to get a positive ID. As we were about to give up and move off the ridge, Derek sat down for a water break in front of a large pine stand, when all of a sudden, a small nondescript flycatcher popped up into the treetops and started calling. Oh my gosh. I was just taking a break um, and the coordinates and the place where we, the coordinates were. And it's up here, it looks like it could be the bird, but it's hard to say. It's very tiny. Due to our lack of familiarity with the species, we were initially hesitant to make a final decision on whether or not this was our target bird. But after listening to and matching the call, we realized that this was in fact the flycatcher we were looking for. Fine flycatcher? <laughs> uh, it's really cool. It came back to the same spot and that's what we heard. People said that it would do this. So it was up there for a while, came down and then it came, came right back up. So that's really cool that we got it. Huge rarity life bird find. Even for Arizona, it's rare. So this is a crazy one. I can't believe we were able to track it down. The pine flycatcher is a small flycatcher species in the tyrant flycatcher family. 
They have olive gray colored backs, a yellowish wash on their underside, white wing bars, and a white eye ring. They are native to Mexico and northern Central America, and they are almost never found in the United States. In fact, this particular bird on Mount Lemmon was only the second individual ever recorded in the country, with the first being reported in 2016 south of Tucson in the Santa Rita Mountains. In their native range, pine flycatchers can be found in edge habitat with clearings and small trees, in addition to highlands and mixed pine and oak forests. An added element of intrigue to the story of this particular pine flycatcher is the way it was discovered. Originally, the bird was reported as a Cordilleran flycatcher, but when images and call recordings were looked into by a regional eBird reviewer, the truth behind this rarity was revealed. With many other flycatchers in this genus looking almost identical, the best way to identify the species is by call. Fortunately for us, once this pine flycatcher started calling, it simply wouldn't stop, allowing us to make a positive ID. I mean, it's pretty incredible that we were able to talk with people, get some GPS coordinates where we have really spotty slash no reception, stake out a place with limited time, and end up actually seeing the bird, especially a bird that small. Because even though it's a um, flycatcher, I didn't expect it to be that tiny for some reason, especially at the top of a tree. Like, it really was not like the tippy top, it was just kind of in there. So. Really glad that we were able to see it, especially with, um, you know, not having all the time today, and especially in a cool habitat like this. We descended the bluff feeling good about finding the rarest bird on the mountain. The pine flycatcher was certainly an exciting visitor to the country. It captivated birders not only in Arizona, but all over the United States. Only time will tell how long this bird will stay on Mount Lemmon, but while it's there, assuredly it will continue to draw in a crowd. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.